It's hard to say that an NBA Finals that featured Kobe Bryant, Pau Gasol, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen is underrated, but it's most definitely overlooked. Because of what happened in 2013 and 2016, 2010 seems to get lost in the mix, overshadowed by some of the greatest finals the league has ever seen during the same decade. So I think it's time we give 2010 some flowers. It brought the Lakers and Celtics a storied rivalry to a new generation. We got the Boston Big Three two years removed from a title against the defending champions and the best player in the world. It was also a rematch of the 2008 Finals, where the Celtics beat Kobe and the Lakers in a humiliating fashion. And now, LA had their chance at revenge. The 2010 NBA Finals had all the makings of one of the greatest Finals series of all time. And it absolutely delivered. And after a 22 year absence, the Boston Celtics are NBA champions once again. Yep, that is not a typo. The Celtics beat the Lakers in Game 6 of the 2008 NBA Finals by 39 points. It's one of the most embarrassing performances in Finals history. But funny enough, it was just the second most embarrassing performance of those Finals. Flashback to Game 4 with the Celtics up 2-1 in the series. The Lakers have a 24 point lead in the second quarter and they seem destined to tie this series at 2. Fast forward to the end of the game, and yeah. The Celtics pulled off a miracle 24 point comeback against number 24 to go up 3 1. And in game 6, they threw the knockout punch. Boston's newly formed Big Three humiliated MVP Kobe right off the court. It was utterly embarrassing. But LA was out for vengeance the next season. They rattled off a 65 win season, cruising through to the finals where they face. The magic. Yeah, the Celtics faced some injuries in the playoffs and lost to Orlando in the second round. LA gets their title, but it wasn't exactly revenge. 2008 left a bad taste in their mouth. They wanted their get back, and in 2010, they'd get their chance. Entering the 2010 season, the Lakers had their eyes set on repeating as champions. They torched the Western Conference with a 57-win season, setting up a first-round matchup against a young Oklahoma City squad. And surprisingly, they pushed the defending champs to the limit. With 15 seconds left in Game 6 and the Lakers up 3-2 in the series, OKC is up 1 and just seconds away from forcing a Game 7. Game 7 was not needed. With 0.5 seconds left, Pau Gasol puts back the Kobe miss and the Lakers win a thriller against the 8 seeded Thunder, setting up a matchup against Utah. LA walked all over the Jazz in a sweep and faced a loaded Suns team in the Western Conference Finals, and in a pivotal Game 5, they'd get some more late game heroics. The foul limit, Odom will throw in. Ron Artest beats the buzzer off Kobe's air ball to get a massive Game 5 win. LA closes out the series in 6, heading back to the NBA Finals for their third straight year. And they smell blood in the water. By 2010, age was becoming a problem for the Celtics. Paul Pierce was 32, Garnett was 33, and Ray Allen was 34, and their age was reflected in the standings. They finished with 50 wins on the season and just 4th in the East. Boston was slightly off from their championship days, but they still had some magic left in the tank. In round 1, they'd blow past Miami in 5 games and face the number 1 seed Cleveland Cavaliers led by MVP LeBron James in round 2. And in an absolute shocker, Boston beat the Cavs in 6, a series that ended up changing the course of NBA history. But at the time, we had no idea. The Celtics advanced to face the Orlando Magic in the conference finals, led by Defensive Player of the Year Dwight Howard. And in another shocker, Boston gets by the Magic in 6. Entering the playoffs, not a soul thought the fourth seeded Celtics would make it this far. They went through an absolute gauntlet in the East, and now they gotta face a team that is foaming at the mouth for the rematch. A rematch that seemed destined to happen. Hey, 
headed into the series, there was still some bad blood left over from 2008, and the tone for these finals was set just 27 seconds into Game 1. Paul Pierce and Ron Artest lock arms and wrestled each other to the floor. Both guys got a technical foul, and the stage was set. The game was relatively close until the third quarter. LA began to pull away, and in the midst of a Laker run, Kobe gets a highlight reel block on Tony Allen and throws down the lob at the other end. The Mamba stuck the Celtics with a 30 piece, and Gasol tagged on 23 and 14. The Lakers get one step closer to revenge and win game one. Ray Allen put on a show in game two. He exploded for 32 points and an NBA record 8 three-pointers, going 7 for 7 from deep in just the first half. But Kobe had a response. He steals the ball and beats the buzzer with a long-range missile to cut the lead to 6 headed into halftime, and it gave LA some energy. They dominated the third quarter and found themselves up 1 with 3 minutes remaining in the fourth and then the Celtics caught fire. They go on a 9-0 run in the final three minutes and steal game two on the road behind Ray Allen's hot hand and Rajon Rondo's triple-double. The series is tied at one. In game three, Ray Allen followed up his unreal performance with the stinker of the century. Two points on 0 for 13 from the field and 0 for 8 from 3. The dude was building a house with all those bricks. But somehow, it was still a close game. Boston was down just 6 entering the 4th quarter. And then Derek Fisher decided to take over. Out of nowhere, he goes off for 11 in the quarter, including a ridiculous dagger for a dude who's 6 foot 1. And again, 0 for 13 from the field. Same type of mates he had. Fisher. Gets hammered and he puts it in. Derek Fisher hard to the back. Fisher's unreal coast to coast and one over a trio of Celtic defenders sealed the game for LA. And they go up 2 1. Up to this point in the series, the 2008 Finals MVP hadn't made much of an impact. He was averaging just 16 on terrible efficiency, and Kevin Garnett's been just okay at 15 a game. But if the Celtics wanted to get back in this series, they'd need some help, which is exactly what they got in Game 4. Boston had six different players score in double digits, including 18 from Big Baby Davis and 12 from Nate Robinson. The Lakers did keep it close, but the others closed it out late for the Celtics, and they tie the series at 2. Game 5 was the most decisive game of the series, and the big boys showed up. The truth finally makes his mark on these finals with a 27 point explosion, including 15 of those in the first half, but unfortunately, it would be overshadowed by this man, because in the third quarter, the Black Mamba went nuts. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Point shootout, All Star Weekend. It's a big one there. Kobe Bryant. Oh, what a touch. Perkins good help defense there. Bryant again. Bryant, one dribble. Alley up to Bryant. Oh, what a play from Bryant. Bryant from way downtown. Bang! Kobe put on a shooting clinic with a 19 point third quarter that was filled with long range threes, heavily contested fadeaways, and a lob. Dwayne Wade couldn't believe what was going on. Kobe finished the game with 38, 5 and 4, but his heroics weren't enough. The Celtics held on to the lead the entire second half and came away with a pivotal game 5 win. Boston is headed back to LA with a shot at another title against the purple and gold. Game 6 was our first major blowout of the series, and it was pure domination from the Lakers. Pau Gasol had his best game of the finals with 17, 13, and 9, while Kobe went off for 26, 11, and 4 steals in a 22 point win. However, one of the major storylines from this game was Boston's starting center Kendrick Perkins. 
While battling for a rebound in the first quarter, Perk tore two ligaments in his right knee and he'd miss game 7. A big loss for the Celtics, but they'd have to make do. LA blows them out and we get a do or die game 7. It was destiny for this series to get to a game 7. It's green versus purple and gold. The greatest rivalry in the sports history facing off against each other in their fifth game 7. Regardless of the era that you're from, this game meant something to you. It was pure magic. The beginning of the game, however, wasn't so magical. Call it great defense, poor offense, or just nerves, but scoring was the hardest thing to come by in the first half. Highlighted by Kevin Garnett flying into the stands for a loose ball with 8 minutes left in the second quarter where the score is... 23-23. It was a grind. Boston ended the half up 6, and you'd be surprised to hear that it was only 6 considering Kobe and Gasol were having a monumental struggle. Kobe had just 8 points on 3 of 14 shooting, and Pau had just 6 on 3 of 12. Thankfully, their savior Ron Artest was carrying the load. The third quarter was more the same. Bodies were flying on the floor, guys were battling for every inch on the court. It was an absolute war. The Celtics would get a short-lived 13-point lead before LA responded and got themselves back in the game, as they headed into the final 12 minutes, down 4. And in the fourth quarter, the floodgates opened. With six minutes to go, Derek Fisher throws up a skyscraping three that splashes down to tie the game at 64. And then, Kobe gets going. He knocks down a couple free throws to give the Lakers their first lead of the second half, following it up with a mid-range jumper, and the crowd explodes. Although he caught fire for a moment, Kobe was in a funk the entire game. He'd finished with 23 and 15 on an iconic 6 of 24 from the field. But when it mattered, he was showing up. With 3 minutes left, Garnett throws down a hammer dunk all over Gasol, to which he responds with a ridiculous fading jumper over a Celtic triple team, putting LA up 6 with a minute and a half to go. And it only got crazier. Rashid Wallace answers with a 3 to make it a 1 possession game, but the Lakers' a savior comes through. Kobe passed me the ball. Artest knocks down the clutchest shot of his career with just over a minute to go to push the lead back to 6. But this game was nowhere near over. Ray Allen comes back down and nails a corner 3 to cut the lead in half. Kobe gets fouled, goes to the line and makes 2 free throws to make it a 5 point lead with 25 seconds left. And the Celtics answer once again. Off an offensive rebound, Rondo hits a triple to make it a 2 point game. And on the inbound, he comes just inches away from stealing the ball away from Kobe. This is easily the most overlooked moment of these finals. Kobe would have been crucified for turning this ball over and choking away the possibility of back-to-back -back titles. The Celtics would have gotten the chance to tie and force overtime or win and capture their second championship in just three years. NBA history would have been flipped upside down had that ball bounced just a few more inches in the other direction. But instead, LA gets the ball back, they make their free throws, and get revenge. Got one more to Shaq. <laughs> so you can take that to the bank. <laughs>